Hey, what's going on guys? It is Chuck here and today in this Firebot tutorial, we're taking a small step back and I'm going to explain what the Q system is in Firebot. Uh, if this is the first Firebot tutorial you're seeing from me, there's a playlist uh, somewhere on the side of the screen uh, as well as in the links in the description down below. Um, specifically, uh, the reason we're talking about cues is that they're really important, especially when you're working with events. The last two tutorials I posted focused on events. Um, so with that said, uh, if you already understand Firebot or have some context to what I'm talking about already, feel free to watch. Otherwise, it may not make a lot of sense and you may need to go back and watch the other videos. Uh, but this one should be short and sweet and not 30 minutes long. <laughs> so hopefully this will be a little bit faster. Uh, so let's take a look at Firebot. All right, so I have Firebot open. One of the main things that you'll start to notice as you use Firebot is that sometimes things will overlap. For example, if your fart command happens and someone, they can potentially, without a cue or a cooldown, abuse this and have this run a lot and the sounds will actually play on top of each other. This is actually a bigger deal though when it comes to an event. If you have multiple people who follow you or subscribe or cheer, or dono, all at the same time, basically in the order that they happen, the events will just fire one after the other after the other. This becomes a bigger deal when we have on-screen overlays or sound effects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at OBS really quick. So let me open OBS here, uh, and I'll show you an example of what this overlapping might look like and sound like. And we're gonna simulate this with some follow events. All right, so uh, if you remember correctly, we have a follow event that shows up on the side of the screen that says, thank you for following. And we would expect that that would play and then go away. Now, if you aren't using cues, uh, which again, we'll look at in one second, this is what happens instead when you get multiple follows at the same time. See how they can keep playing and overlapping one another? And you see the videos playing behind it as well. So when we look at our follow event specifically, we actually built this with a queue. And I said, we'll come back and look at this. So the queue is here. You'll see that I named my queue alerts. Now I could unset this and it won't have a queue, but we want to, we want to use our alerts queue. This alerts queue is a custom type of queue. That means that at the top, you set how long uh, when the when this thing you're looking at, in this case, this is the follow event. When the follow happens, how long until the next follow event can trigger? Um, and it's basically just putting them in a line. So it's not like it won't reactivate if you get two follows within seven seconds. It shows one, waits for it to finish, which I told that it takes seven seconds to finish, and then the next one will play. Custom queue, uh, in terms of your mode, is probably the way you'll work with this most of the time. There's another type of queue mode you can use, and we're gonna call this uh, a delay queue. What a delay queue does is this uses the delay effect to set how long this lasts. This is mostly something, if you are using delays, this is because this is before the custom queue existed. Um, so I have some older things in Firebot that don't that aren't um, using the custom queue, they're using delay. So instead I have to add a delay effect at the end and we're gonna say that this is seven seconds. So basically this waits for this to play. This happens instantly. We have a delay already of 1.5 seconds and then show text and chat happen instantly. And then we have a seven second wait and then it will start. This is how the delay queue works. You can put delays in. This is especially helpful if you need to have a dynamic length to your to your queue length. So for example, if there are certain things where this duration may need to be set by a game, for example, well, what you would do here is you would use a variable that you could pass in such as a number. So you would pass in X number of seconds, and you would pass that in directly into uh, the, the delay duration. You can't do that with a uh, effect duration here. So this requires an explicit number. 
Whereas if you use a delay cue, uh, you can use the delay effect to set how long this lasts. Uh, and lastly uh, is the interval uh, cue. Basically what this would be used for, so this is like interval, uh, you set for all effects that are using this cue, they have the same length. So all of my alerts are seven seconds long. None of them are longer than seven seconds. So I could use the interval cue and they would all take seven seconds to run no matter what. The thing about cues is that uh, they don't overlap. So, or sorry, they will overlap. So your alerts queue is separate from your channel rewards queue. They could both happen at the same time. So uh, one of the things I do in my stream is I basically have two queues. So I have one queue for channel points and then another queue for all of my alerts. Um, you can decide how many queues you want, uh, but that's kind of how I've ended up doing it. Um, and lastly is this queue priority. Basically this means that if this event happens, it skips the line. So if you're sharing channel points and follow events and subs all in the same single queue, you might wanna set your follow events and subs and donos as a priority. So they skip ahead of a sound effect or a video playing from your channel points, for example. That's what queue priority is doing. Um, I highly recommend you apply a queue to any event that plays sound or that plays uh, a video in your overlay. But yeah, that's basically how cues work. So if you have any questions uh, that I didn't answer or if I wasn't super clear about something, leave a comment below. Uh, I'll answer it, um, or if you want me to uh, use them um, in an example, uh, happy to show that. Oh, one last thing. When you're testing and manually hitting the play button, the queue is not respected when you're testing in Firebot. So if you want to test the queue, uh, go in and uh, you know run your channel reward multiple times and see if the queue prevents the overlapping. Um, when you hit the play button, it does not simulate the queue time. So that's why I was able to overlap my follow events like that, even though it was a part of a queue. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I love your faces and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.